let's talk about voice acting and AI, because that's kind of in the news right now. Uh, SAG-AFTRA, the uh, union for the voice actors, had actually signed an agreement with just one company, Replica, uh, about about this, and that caused a lot of controversy, uh, even though it's not a, a blanket statement. Uh, Sarah El Male, I think I hopefully I pronounced that correctly. You can follow her. She's actually on TikTok, uh, if, if you're there. Um, she, she's talking about that they need a, a, a larger, more collective agreement for everybody. But right now, this is just with one company, Replica, and this is to use voice synthesis. Um, and a lot of the actors feel like they were left out of this uh, discussion. Uh, Steve Bloom, nobody in our community approved this uh, that I know of. Games are the bulk of my livelihood and have been for years. What are you referring to? Meaning what's going on? Um, and they talk about, uh, you know, kind of the synthesized characters here and, and how is, how is that going to work? Uh, synthetic performers. And so here's a strange thing as a writer in this. Okay. First of all, um, actors make everything better. I'm a writer. Anytime I hand a script to an actor, they make it better. 100%, 100%. But here's some weirdness. Um, let's we can just talk about like games I've worked on. So if you have a union actor, um, you need to have all union actors, which is fair, right? And actually, this has helped uh, Liu and uh, for the Anacrusis actually got her union card for being in the Anacrusis because it was a union project, right? We use a signer and this is a whole thing. It's fine. It's fine. It's good. It protects them. I am pro union. Um, but sometimes during the game, you need to record a little extra something. Um, now it may be a little something extra, like a belch and you're just going to use that. That's, we consider that a sound effect. And so I think Eric does the belches in TF2. Um, and we think that's okay. Um, for the, our best of our knowledge, this is where we're, we're operating within the union guidelines. Same with, uh, the Anacrusis, you'll hear some background noises in some of the areas of the ship and they're kind of garbled and not really clear. That's a sound effect. So that's not a voice performance. Um, but those could have been synthesized, but we just didn't. Um, but they could have been, right? Um, and then there's times like when we first released TF2, um, we had this problem where uh, the pyro sounded like he was saying um, Allah. And so, excuse me. So it sounded like he's saying God is great. Now, while there's nothing wrong with saying God is great, uh, it's problematic when it's coming from the pyro. Um, so I said, oh, this is simple. This is, we have his performance. I'm just going to clip this word and put it over here and put the other word in back. And ends up, I change it to some other phrase that's also um, verbatim uh, because it still sounded like Allah. Um, so we have that all the time. Like once there's a performance, once we recorded the voices, we can cut up that audio and use it in different ways. Now we don't manufacture lines, but you can say like, hey, I really like the way they say okay here and I'm just going to take this okay, um, even though it's a part of a longer sentence. All of that is fine. Um, but what if you want them to say words they've never said before? And this is what the this is what the union's trying to protect against, right? And so they're saying you have to approve this for them to synthesize your voice from this, or you have to um, agree or, or or I guess re-record it. Um, but the problem is, for some roles, it's more sound effect than performance, right? If you think about it. Um, a lot of what AI up to now has been about the generation of it and the providence of it. You've taken stolen work and you've created a new work out of that. That is wrong. This is about performance because I could do my own voice and have that synthesized and I'd be a synthetic performer. I know the providence of that. It's clean. Is that still okay? Well, I mean, if it's just for me, for my own personal game, sure, of course, you can do anything you want. But once you're engaging with the unions, you have to start thinking about those rules. And this is what this is what Sarah and other people are, are struggling with. Because it is a struggle, because it's not as clear as you think. Um, I was working on a game at Bossa Studios uh, that never got released. Uh, Bossa Studios uh, did a year stint there. Uh, you go wishlist their new game, um, Lost Skies. Uh, we, we, were, we were working on this idea that I've had, and I would like to revisit this sometime, where I really like Far Cry games but I don't like the story missions. I like the planning and plotting to taking over bases and stuff, right? So let's remove the story missions and put that in there. And then kind of meeting the game uh, Mercenaries. If you've never played Mercenaries, original Mercenaries is good. Mercenaries too, eh. uh, But uh, the, the first one is you, you have different factions and you can align yourself with those different factions. 
Um, and the problem then is I want to have a, a, Hey, you just did this and this, and now I want you to react with me, um, and, and say something to me. And we looked at generative AI, um, for that. This is back in 2018 before this was all a, a big huff. Uh, and we looked at it kind of innocently of just like, just looking to get, not worry about performance. Knowing performance would be bad and just looking to get these sound effects of saying like, I'm mad at you now, you better run. I'm going to kill you kind of things. Right. You know, like think of you thinking that you slyly stole some stuff from one of the factions, but the factions catches you and, and, and now they're mad at you. Um, and didn't really worry about unions or performance or anything else. And how would I approach that now? I think, because I still like that idea of a game. So the idea was that everything was an AI actually, that everything was, was robots in the world. And so that they talk like AI was okay. But that's, you know, if you listen to Portal, Ellen is an AI, but we used AI to be AI and ends up, we like the not AI, we like the actor, right? The actor performing as AI does a better job than AI did performing as AI, if that makes sense. So it's not clean cut. Um, and especially as you start to think about the smaller roles, the little roles that you, that are essentially VFX, you know, like run, shoot, kill, um, you know, all those, all those friendly words, uh, do all of those need to be union actors? Currently they do. Right. And so often we would go into a recording session and we'd be like, Hey, um, we're allowed to record two roles under this contract. So we're gonna have you have a main role and a secondary role and just some pickup lines. If you notice in TF2, actually a lot of actors have two roles, uh, um, or actually, excuse me, not TF2 having two roles. TF2, they have roles in other of our games because we would record them at the same time, excuse me. So like the spy um, is also the uh, helicopter pilot in the Love for Dead series. Uh, and that was just because we were in the studio and we were trying to save time. Um, but like, if you look at something like CSGO where I recorded all of those actors locally in their local communities, um, you know, there's no overlap and it's just, it's a, it's a mess. Um, so part of me as a game developer wants the ease of the synthesized performance, but knowing it's not going to ever be as good as the human performance. But then some of me says, well, you know, sometimes that's okay because I don't need a performance. I need a sound effect. And I struggle with that because I, I side with the union and I side with the actors. Cause again, I, I joke of for the Anna Crucis, you know, the last game I've worked on, uh, I could give any word to Liu and she would make it funny and good. Uh, I could say, just say the word water and she would crack me up how she said it. Um, cause she's a really good actress, actor. And, you know, I don't want to lose that, but I don't need that all the time. And then it becomes a question of this contract also with uh, Replica talks about if they've manufactured lines out of performance, right? Because we all know now you can go talk into something for, you know, 10 minutes and it'll come back and it'll do a pretty good job. It doesn't do a good job of performance though, right? But sometimes you just need like, oh my God. Like, so in Half-Life 2 episode 2, Alex says, hey, go pick up that thing over there. I wrote that line because we didn't know what she was going to pick up what you were going to pick up, what you were going to get as the, as the reward. We didn't know where it was going to be, but we knew we had to record it because the pipeline to getting it all into the game is so long that we had to record it. Um, and that's, you know, one of the things, if you think about it is we record, we chop up that audio, we put it in game, we send it out to localization of what ends up getting into game. We like, right. There's a, there's a long process from recording to getting it in the game. And this would help with that, but also so what, right? that's just part of making games and, and you should respect that. And so it'll be interesting how this actually shakes out because this is one of those, uh, I'm not that smart. And so what I do is people like Sarah are smarter and about this subject at least. And so I kind of respect their choice and their thoughts about this and what the union decides on this. But it's an interesting and not as clear cut as the other generative AI uses. Cause again, it's not about, providence but it's about performance and that just gets weirdly murkier yeah i don't want to be the problem <laughs>